eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> Hello and Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome to 2017. A year that everyone has already decided is going to be better than 2016 before it's really had a chance to even get started. And who could blame people really for thinking that? In 2016, every celebrity died, a used car salesman was elected president, people used social media in a politically volatile year to throw around their opinions on things that they knew nothing about, egged on by biased media that lies to your faces and pushes whatever agenda they're backing while calling all the news by the other side fake, and the Cubs won the World Series. So, you know, what's better than thinking about all that depressing stuff? More pony videos from 2011. Yeah, let's get right into that. We're actually going to be sticking still to videos from the winter and spring of 2011 for this video. There's a lot of notable things that were still around that I didn't even mention in the first video. I actually had people yelling at me. It's about videos that I didn't choose in the first video. So I took a few of the ones people yelled at me about, and we're going to showcase them here. Our first video is a video that makes me feel old, and it's Ponycraft 2 by Stubbornly Obsolete. We need immediate evac. What happened to Kerrigan wasn't your fault. Belay that order. We're moving out. What? You're not just gonna leave us. Vengeance doesn't factor into this. Our revolution's about freedom. When you figure it out, let us know. We're waiting on you. Now I say that this video makes me feel old because it makes me remember that StarCraft II was a game that came out in 2010, right before MLP started airing. I have a lot of vivid memories of playing this game when it first released, so it's hard to believe that it's been six years since it came out. Though this isn't too bad compared to other things that make me feel old. For instance, Toy Story came out 21 years ago and I was eight. Feels like old times already. <laughs> now this was suggested by a lot of people as a video that should have been in the first Nostalgia Bomb video, and it was another video responsible for getting a lot of people's early attention towards the MLP series. What this video does particularly well is its lip sync work, and the combination of dramatic source audio and good scene selection by the author make the video a lot more badass than you'd think a pony mashup would be. As with the Elder Scrolls trailer mentioned in the last video, a number of popular gaming blogs covered the video, including our favorite friends at Kotaku. And while heaping praise on the editing, they also described the author's effort as taking one for the team and making it. Now I note this because, one, Kotaku is shit and I enjoy ragging on them, but two, because there was a very common attitude that a lot of people had during this time. The narrative that if people were making videos with My Little Pony, it was because they were jumping on a fad. You know, a fad that's still getting quality fan work made even for it today. But they were making it because it was a fad, not because they genuinely liked the show and wanted to do cool things with the footage. Now thankfully, if you read down in the comments of that same article, there's almost universal support for the show at the time, showing the quality was breaking through to even those dastardly gamers. And speaking of horrible gamers, the next video is a crossover that shows the worst kind of gamer, a Canadian gamer.
this video, this freaking video. Now I said last time that Night of Pony was what inspired me to want to make videos, but it was this video that helped me decide what type of video it would actually be. Now I absolutely love the Scott Pilgrim movie and the work of director Edgar Wright. And when this video made the rounds, I was so inspired that I decided to try to make a movie trailer for Hot Fuzz as my first video attempt. Now this was at a time early on when the tease of Spike and Rarity as a thing was all too real and fans hadn't yet realized that the storyline was destined to go nowhere in an endless cycle of manipulative friend zoning. But it was a showcase of how versatile the MLP characters are in being able to be plugged in as characters from other media and fit very well. Though to be fair, the only other notable character choices were Rainbow Dash as the lesbian and Big Mac as the buff vegan guy. Fluttershy as the skateboarder boyfriend for some reason, I don't know. What's up? How's life? He seems nice. But nonsensical characterization aside, this was a very awesome video, to the point Edgar Wright himself took notice of the video and put it on his blog, thus drawing more people's attention to the MLP series. Now, keeping in the same theme of good characterization, we change Rarity over from a difficult-to-obtain love interest to a Chinese military captain. You're the saddest bunch I ever met, but you can bet before we're through, Mr. Now this is a crossover video set to Mulan's popular, I'll make a man out of you, which is a phrase a few people in the fandom would love to hear Rarity say to them. And as a general reminder, I'll take this chance to crush a lot of your hopes and dreams by reminding you that Rarity isn't real. And she never will be. I chose this video for the showcase because it was one of the earliest videos to make fantastic use of storytelling in a video using the scenes. The video follows the progression of building up these characters and showing them in weak moments near the beginning as they're being trained by Rarity, and then slowly builds them up until they're showcasing their godlike abilities near the end. And if I hear one of you complaining about how Fluttershy making a dragon feel bad and self-conscious isn't godlike, well I'd like to see you do it! But perhaps the best part of this is Rarity, who is placed as the drill sergeant and is doing so in a believable way despite being in a bathrobe and a dress for parts of the video. She's even waving glue around in front of the characters to motivate them to not screw up. Because you know, screw ups get sent off to the Elmer's factory, Rainbow Dash. And now we take a break from the crossover videos and the glue threats to explore a more intelligent side of YouTube. This calls for a sus It's my party! No, Pinkie Pie, this is no time for sus- Friendship is Magnets by Crowbo Productions, or Dykeike as we knew him at that time, was the first YouTube poop of higher quality to be made from the show material. Though calling a YouTube poop high quality is a bit of an oxymoron in the first place. But the video featured a lot of video effects not yet done by any other fandom editors, and I remember as an inexperienced editor at the time, seeing these effects and wanting to learn even more how to do them. Which is really sad to say, that's what really intrigued me were the video effects, considering the main draw of this video was the use of voice manipulation to turn the characters into depraved, sex-craved nymphomaniacs. But if I could just have sex... No, we want to avoid that. Oh, good. I'll stay here and... Wait, you have to have sex! Your baths will surely come in handy. Now in the past I would say that YouTube poops were a guilty pleasure of mine, but at this point I'm so past the point of caring that I can say I enjoy stupid humor like this when it's done well. And this video certainly qualifies in that respect. Cute! Well it is Tim Mellon! And finally we reach a video that has had a resounding impact on the MLP fandom and still does today. Ponies the Anthology 1. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I only have one question. Where is Harvey Dent? You know where Harvey is? You know who he is? We're not intimidated by thugs. You know, you remind me of my father. I hate my father. Now, for full disclosure, I've contributed to anthologies 2 through 6, so I may sound biased in praising the series as much as I'm about to, but this was the one anthology I had no involvement in. This was the video that spawned a lot of imitators, but nothing else really quite had the same quality as the anthology series. It started off as an idea by a group of AMV editors to take the popular AMV Hell series formula of short anime videos set to audio clips from pop culture and use ponies as the main video source instead of anime. It grew to such quick popularity that the group immediately went to work on the second one, and it's been sort of a fandom tradition ever since. 
The first anthology is notably shorter than the others at around 30 minutes in length, but the creators didn't think it would grow as big as it did. And they used media from every medium imaginable, ranging from jackass to rap music to portal to Pink Panther. The variety of the clips carried an appeal to everyone, no matter what you were into. And with the high editing standards for the people working on it, it's a series that has continuously adapted and stood the test of time. Okay, guys, I shilled your, uh, your anthology series. Where's my 20 bucks? Where is it? Come on. Jay? I'm only Jay. Stealing your shit. <laughs> <laughs>